In this video, I'm going to show you the Audio Breath Pacer. It's a software tool that works on Microsoft Windows and it's freely available from my website. It's designed as a stress reduction tool and it works through two features or functions. First one is breath pacing. Uh, so the idea is that it helps to uh, develop a slow regular breathing pattern which helps to calm the mind. And the second feature is that it, you can opt to embed uh, audio brain stimulation technology. Okay, so let's look at breath pacing. How does it actually help with stress reduction? Well, probably the, the key mechanism is that it helps to develop something called heart rate coherence. Heart rate coherence is a natural and reflex-like uh, body response, physiological response in which the heart rate speeds up and slows down again in sync with breathing. So the graphic here shows it. This is a, a, a screenshot from software, uh, biofeedback software, in which the red trace is a measure of heart rate and it's measured beat by beat. So each little step that you see on the red trace is a, is a heartbeat and the green trace is a measure of breath. An independent measure of breath so it's uh, when it when it rises here that's breathing in and then it falls that's breathing out and you can see that on the in-breath the heart rate steps up so it's increasing on the in-breath and then it slows down again on the out-breath and you can see that all the way through there's this coupling of the two signals and that's that's essentially what heart coherence is and you can also see that there's uh, the, the breath here is regular. In fact, the breathing rate here is about six breaths per minute or one breath every 10 seconds, which is quite slow. And, and that seems to be a key sort of uh, breathing rate for coherence. It's, a, it's like a sort of resonance point at which the heart rate coherence effect is maximum in the sense that the uh, swings in heart rate, the increases and the decreases are the biggest and there's plenty of research now that shows the benefits of heart rate, heart, heart rate coherence. Um, not just as a simple state of relaxation but as an optimal performance state. Now if you've got a biofeedback, a heart rate variability biofeedback tool then the breath pacing software can work very well with that uh, as a help to developing coherence. But it also works pretty well just as a standalone tool. The software has optional brain stimulation technology too, meaning that you can embed a beat within the sound. You don't have to have it. You can have the simple breath pacing without any beats, but you can choose to try out the beats either with the breath pacing or just uh, independently of breath pacing. But the idea is that the beats have an effect on brain physiology and, and so they help with relaxation like that. Um, probably one of the key mechanisms is something called brainwave entrainment, which I'll cover later on in the video. So that's, that's all I'll say just now. Um, in the video, we'll cover how to install the software how to use it, so we'll have a look at the different controls and what they do. And then thirdly, I'll just offer a, a few very brief guideline, guidelines on how to breathe, how to uh, use the breathing for relaxation. Uh, and lastly, we'll have a look at the controls for the brain stimulation technology, the, the isochronic and the binaural beats. Okay, I'm going to show you how to install the Breath Pacer software. Now, when you sign up, you'll receive an email which has a link to the software download. And you just need to save this to your computer. It doesn't matter where. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the download now in Windows Explorer. Uh, and it's in the form of a, a zip file or a com compressed file. It's called audiobreathpacer.zip. So I've selected it in Windows Explorer. Uh, first thing you need to do is extract the files. So I'm right clicking. Uh, and I'm selecting from the menu Extract All. Now, it offers you the chance to say where you're going to extract the files to. Uh, that doesn't matter. 
uh, I'm just accepting the default here. So I'm clicking Extract and it's done it straight away. And there are three files. I'll just mention this one. This is a, a PDF file of the user guide. Uh, it's, a, it's a document that tells you, covers the same material as this video more or less. It tells you how to uh, uh, install the software and how to use it. So it's just an alternative if you prefer to read uh, rather than listen. So to install, we haven't installed yet, uh, it's this file. This is the one that you want. It's called setup.exe, meaning that it's an executable file. Uh, and I'm just double clicking on it to run it. Now, at this point, it's worth saying that sometimes your antivirus software will, will do a check on the file. So you might have to wait for that to finish. Um, it's not happening for me now. So it's opened a, a wizard and I'm just going to follow the steps by clicking next. Uh, so it, there's a license that you need to agree and next again. Um, it offers you where to install to. I recommend just going with the default. Next again. Uh, it's ready to go. So now it's installing. Doesn't take long. Right now this typically happens as well. You get a window that pops up and it's Windows asking permission to install software onto your hard drive. So you need to say yes to that. And once you've done that, it doesn't take long and then you get this window saying it's finished. So I'm closing that. Uh, I don't need this anymore. And when you've installed the software, it will place a new icon on your desktop that looks like this. So it's called York Biofeedback Breath Pacer. And all you need to do to start is double click. And here's the window. So next we'll cover how to use the breath pacing and the controls involved. So we'll start the software and here it is. Now the most obvious control is the play and stop button which it toggles the sound. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just demonstrate the breath pacing by pressing play and there's a tone that rises in pitch and then falls in pitch. And the idea is that you follow that with your breathing. I'll just press stop again there. Now here we've got a timer display. And the rest of the controls are arranged under four different tabs uh, that you see across the top here. Now the software it can it generates two distinct tones. You might have uh, noticed that when I played the sound there were two, there was a higher note and a lower note that were going together. Uh, and the two tones, they're called channel one and channel two in the software. And each channel has its own set of controls uh, under these tabs. And they're, they're pretty much identical between the two tabs. And if I go back to the volume and setup tab, uh, then I have these controls, I've got a volume control. This is like a master volume. Uh, so I can move that slider up and down. And this next slider is the channel mixer. So if I pan it right across to the, to the left, this is channel one. So now the tone is, it's only channel one. There's no channel two and it's a deeper note. If I move it to the right, now it's only channel two, two, which is a higher note. So that's a channel mixer. I'll put it back to the middle where it is by default. So 50%. Okay, next control, fade time. When I press stop, the, the sound takes about one second to fade out now so, so that you can use this control to set that fade out time. Okay, now obviously you can set the parameters of the breathing. And you do that using controls on the breathing tab. So let's have a look at these. Uh, firstly, there's the, the breath pace. That's the most obvious thing, the, the breathing rate in breaths per minute. Uh, again, I can make it faster. And slower. 
Now you also see there's a bar graph that you can use in addition to the sound if you want to uh, do a visual pacing and you can even have that as a pop out window, here it is. I'll just close that for now. Now the other controls, you can also set the ratio between inhalation and exhalation using this slider. So you can, it's as a percentage. So at the moment by default, it's set on 40% inhalation, meaning the exhalation is rather longer. And you can also set a pause after the in-breath and also after the out-breath using these two controls. So at the moment, again, by default, there's no pause after the in-breath, but there is a pause after the out-breath. Okay, last couple of controls. Uh, you, you may have noticed that the volume changes over the cycle of the breath as well. So it goes quiet at the start and the end of the breath. So it's quiet now. And that's controlled, that volume control is, is, that volume change is controlled by this slider. So if I didn't check this box, then it would be at a constant volume. So that's what that does. Let's take a look at the controls in the channel tabs. Now, uh, a lot of these relate to the uh, beats, so the brain stimulation technology. So I'll come back to them later on. But for now, I'll just mention that the pitch lower limit and the pitch upper limit, that defines the, the pitch change over the cycle of the breath. Now, it's usually best to have those fairly close together for aesthetic reasons. Okay, let's come back to the setup tab. I just want to say something about these three controls here. Uh, these are, you probably only need to set these once when you first start using the software and you probably never need to use them again. But I'll just explain what they do. This first one uh, controls the sound device on your computer that the sound goes through. Now it's only relevant if you have more than one and most likely you don't have more than one. So you could probably just leave that on default. You can see here that there are, there are different options. At the moment on this computer, I have just one sound device. But if you had a, a plug-in USB sound device, then that would show up on, on there as well. Sample rate controls the sort of the quality of the sound. So 44.1 kilohertz, which is the default, that's the equivalent of a, of a CD. Now, if you had performance issues, if your computer was rather slow, you might uh, benefit from dropping that down. I'll just leave it for now. This last control, samples per buffer, uh, it's a little bit technical, uh, and I'm not going to explain exactly what it means, but it is covered in the user guide if you want to know more. But what I would say is that you should probably set this as low as you can without there being clicks and cracks, crackles in the sound. So there are different options there. Uh, and again, it's a performance thing. If you have a slow computer, you might need to set that higher so that the sound doesn't click and crackle. So that more or less covers what you need to know to use breath pacing. I want to offer a few guidelines for breathing because there's a major pitfall to be wary of when you're using the software, or for that matter, any other form of paced breathing, including simple counting. And that is that you can induce a degree of overbreathing or hyperventilation. Overbreathing is a problem because it reduces the oxygen delivery to brain cells, and that's obviously not going to be conducive to optimal brain function. When you overbreathe, you actually reduce the amount of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood. And this causes two things. Firstly, a constriction of the blood vessels, in the brain especially. And secondly, the blood holds on more tightly to its oxygen. So overbreathing is not a good idea. And moreover, it's very easy to fall into. People tend to know about hyperventilation in the extreme case where there's gasping for breath. But hyperventilation is on a spectrum. And in my experience as a biofeedback practitioner, it's common for people to have mild or chronic hyperventilation 
and not to know anything about it. And it's particularly easy to fall into overbreathing when you breathe in an overly controlled way or when your conscious mind controls breathing in a sort of mechanical way, as you can do when you're following the sound. Instead, find a way to let your body breathe for you, so you're breathing with awareness rather than consciously controlling your breath, which is quite a different thing. The body has non-conscious mechanisms for controlling ventilation, and you need to give these a chance to work. When you do, the breath is going to be naturally gentle. Note that slow breathing isn't necessarily not hyperventilating because each breath, although slow, can be bigger than it needs to be. So allow each breath to be small and gentle, as small as it can be. And in fact, even a little bit of air hunger or the sense that you could do with breathing a bit more is not a bad thing, at least within reason. In practice, you're not going to underbreathe unless you have some sort of lung problem or lung disease. Let each breath right the way out. Let all your muscles go soft as you exhale. So you're not forcing the air out, but you're letting it sink out like the last bit of air going out of a tire. Feelings of stress and anxiety can stop you doing this. Give it time, don't rush. If you still don't feel like you're fully letting go, or if it feels uncomfortable, consider getting some help from a professional biofeedback practitioner. In the final section, we'll cover the brain stimulation functions and how to use them. You can embed beats into the sound, either isochronic beats or binaural beats. And these beats have an effect on brain physiology. There may be more than one different mechanism involved, uh, and it may be that the two different types of beat have different mechanisms, but one of the key ideas is brainwave entrainment, meaning that the brain falls into rhythm with the beats, or in other words, the brain's electrical activity or brain waves, as measured in EEG, follow the rhythm of the beats. Now, here's a sample of the beats. And you can set the frequency of the beats. Uh, what I had there in the sample was 10 hertz, so this control sets 10 hertz. And different frequencies will affect the brain in different ways. So, so 10 hertz uh, will entrain alpha rhythm, which is associated with relaxed awareness. Now just a word of warning here, be careful about what frequencies you try out, because they won't necessarily be all beneficial. Uh, but alpha, 10 hertz, should be safe enough. And another one you can try is the so-called Schumann frequency, which is about 7.8. And you can set that uh, exactly like that. Um, that should be fine. That should be beneficial for most people. Um, but I'd also add that you shouldn't, uh, you should, probably shouldn't listen to the beats while you're driving or while you're operating machinery or anything dangerous like that. And I would also say if you have epilepsy or any history of seizures, then you shouldn't listen to beats. Now, the difference between isochronic and binaural beats is rather technical. But, but again, here's this, the sample that I played, and I'll play another one. That's isochronic beats. For binaural beats, it only works if you listen on headphones. So you have to listen on headphones. And the beat is actually created by the brain rather than being inherent in the sound as it is with the isochronic beats. What happens is the software plays a slightly different tone into each ear. Now, I've read that isochronic beats are more effective at brainwave entrainment. But having said that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're more effective at changing the way that you feel subjectively. Okay, let's have a look at the different controls. Uh, now, we've got, again, we've got the two channel controls. So, so that, again, the software is producing two different, uh, in, more or less independent tones. And on each channel, we've got more, well, the same controls. First one, the pitch control. 
I've got this selected to slider, which means that the software plays a constant sound whose pitch is determined by this slider control here, mark pitch. Now, if you want, you can embed the beats and have them at, at the same time as you're doing breath pacing by selecting that option there. But for the demonstration, I'm just going to leave it on slider. Now, over here is another combo box control. It's called waveform. And this one allows you to select between either binaural beats or the isochronic beats. Now, you'll see that there are two different options for isochronic beats. Um, in the first one, which is the main one, the left and right ears, uh, or channels of the sound, so to speak, are in phase or in sync, so the beats are together. Um, in, in the other one, in the anti-phase, the beats are out of step between left and right, so, uh, so that's rather obscure. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to use that most of the time. For now, I'll just leave it set at in phase. So that's the waveform control. Um, I've mentioned the frequency, the beat frequency control, which is a slider. Uh, let's have a quick look at the duty cycle. Now, what this controls is the sharpness of the beat or, or the, the length of the sound as opposed to the silence between the beats. So if I just demonstrate, I've got to do it on both channels. If I move it to the left, it's a, it's a sharper sound. And to the right, it's a much more sort of spread out and vague beat. So I'll put that back to the middle, again on both channels. Now, another control that you have on both channels is this one, left-right panning. So it's a slider. Uh, and what this means is you can you can actually direct each channel, each sound, towards either the left ear or the right ear. So it's only going to make sense if you're listening on headphones. But for example, what you can do is you can have channel 1 directed to left, like that, and channel 2 directed to the right. Um, so what this allows you to do is you can direct different beat frequencies to each ear and therefore have a, a differential effect on the different brain hemispheres. Now, again, I'd advise you to know what you're doing if you want to try that out, but the software does allow you to do it. Uh, one thing I should mention is that it will work only if you've got this option unchecked. So that what that does, when it's checked, the beat frequencies are always the same between the channels, so they're tied together. So you need to have that unchecked for it to work. Uh, so I'll just put it back for now. Um, yeah, what else? Another effect that you can do with this left-right panning control, uh, What I, I'll just demonstrate it now briefly. Uh, I'm just going to check that. So channel 1 is to left, channel 2 is to right. Um, I'm going to select channel 2 to be anti-phase and now or I'm also going to set the beat frequency to be quite low so that you can hear this properly but now I've set it so that the sound will pan first to the left then over to the right and then back to the left again and so forth so it's it sounds like it's bouncing left to right uh, here we go again this will only work you'll only hear this if you're listening on headphones So again, that, that may be useful, uh, may be interesting. Uh, again, probably probably you'd use that if you know what you're doing, if, maybe if you're a professional therapist and you want to uh, have various effects going on. But you, know, you can do it with the software and that more or less covers what you can do with the beat functionality.